guest on the phone, Nicholas Kozloff. He is the author of Hugo Chavez, Oil Politics and the Challenge to the U.S., as well as Revolution South America and the Rise of the New Left. Welcome to the program, Nicholas. Thank you for having me. So um, give us a, uh, you know, I, I got to say about uh, Hugo Chavez that um, he is one of the most controversial figures not so, I mean, obviously in the con- uh, the context of uh, of broader uh, American politics, but even on the left, there is a there has always been, it seems to me, a um, a a real polarity of opinion about this man. Um, wh- why do you think that is? Well, I think that populism, as it's you know defined in Latin America, is always rather polemical. It's uh, based on the charismatic leadership of, uh, of um, you know, usually someone who comes in who's going to break up the political system, rescue the country from economic political collapse, uh, and rallies the people against uh, ill-defined foreign domestic enemies. And, uh, and I think that uh, Venezuelan politics has become very, very polarized by both pro and, uh, and anti Chavez forces. I, I I would like to stick out a, a kind of a third position, which is not too common. But I think that there is a place for a more reasoned, uh, reflective uh, perspective on on Chavez and his rule, which it, 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 which it, you know, while admitting that uh, Chavez has has uh, accomplished a lot through his social and economic policies. You know, is nevertheless a little bit critical of this populist style of leadership, which I think uh, is, you know, you can rally people for short term political gains through populism and accomplish a lot. But I think that it, it, um, there's been a lot of top down leadership and there's been some bottom up building uh, empowerment from the bottom up, but not nearly enough in my personal view. So I think. That's where I'm, I'm a little bit critical of, of populism because it, 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 it relies, I think, excessively on this top-down model. And so I think that there was this contradiction almost from the inception with Chavez between the top-down leadership and then building empowerment from the bottom up. And I, in my personal view, there wasn't enough attention on the latter. Hmm. All right. Well, so g- give us a little bit of, uh, of, uh, of a history of Chavez. Um, when he came to power, and what in what was the context in which uh, he came to power uh, in the late nineties? Well, I think uh, you know if Americans were uh, uh, aware at all of Venezuela during the nineties or before, they probably regarded the country as a as kind of a corrupt two party democracy, similar to the U.S. Uh, and a reliable geostrategic partner exporting oil to the U.S., one of the leading oil exporters to the U.S. And I think Chavez essentially blew that two-party system out of the water and uh, created his own uh, PSUV party, uh, amalgamated the left into his own populist banner. And uh, I think uh, has revolutionized Venezuelan politics, and I think to this day, I think just psychologically speaking, the Venezuelan people have changed, and they're not going to go back to, uh, or it's going to be very difficult for the right to uh, turn the country back to the days of the 1990s when Venezuela was more allied to the U.S. Uh, uh, you know, um, whatever happens in this next election, I just think it will be very difficult psychologically to turn back the, uh, the accomplishments and just the psychological makeup of the Venezuelan people uh, who have been really radicalized by the Chavez years? Yeah, I mean, I mean, talk uh, talk to, uh, w- about that uh, that that psychological change. I mean, where where did it go? Where did it uh, just uh, describe where it went from and where it went to? Uh, because the it, it seems that there was. Uh, I mean, you, you describe it as um, there was a, a state in in Venezuela of essentially the people being left out of of the equation in some respects. I mean, is that accurate? Well, I think uh, well, Chavez has employed this, um, this term, socialism for the 21st century. 
And to my mind, it was always a rather vaguely defined term. It was, I don't think Chavez ever just um, satisfactorily explained how is this going to be different from Cuban-style socialism. And so uh, there were um, a number of innovative measures that Chavez instituted, which I would have liked to have seen uh, deepened even greater to an even greater extent. I'll give you a couple of examples. Uh, very few people are aware that Venezuela has one of the most vibrant uh, economic uh, systems of economic cooperatives in the world. And uh, I'm not saying that the economic cooperatives are perfect. That sometimes there's mismanagement, there's corruption, there, there might be cronyism. And nevertheless, I think it's worth looking into economic cooperatives, particularly in light of the 2008 financial collapse, uh, workers are looking for alternatives, and there is a kind of a crisis of the capitalist state in Europe and also the United States right now. So, so uh, in some ways, ben is, uh, Chavez was a throwback in, in terms of some of his politics, but in, in, in other ways, in other respects, I think he was quite innovative, for example, with the economic cooperatives, like I say, but also with, uh, say, the communal councils, which uh, were designed to empower local communities. And you had communities actually taking charge of their own budgets, which is actually a pretty radical idea. So it would be like no longer is the city council, the state government, or even the federal government deciding on the budgetary matters, the community itself decides. And, and that is the inherent, inherently radical idea. And I think uh, it, it, there were, Chavez did push for criminal councils, but I would have liked to have seen an even greater deepening of that. And then there are other ideas, for example, alternative currencies. You know, Chavez backed the Sucre currency, uh, which never really got off the ground, unfortunately. But I think in principle, you know, phil philosophically, it is not a bad idea. And in fact, in some countries that have been ravaged by the financial collapse, like Spain, they're experimenting with these alternative currencies. So, um, and then we could name other, uh, go into other measures, for example, the ALBA alliance with the reciprocal barter exchange outside of the, uh, the, the typical corporate trade. And all of these are worth uh, looking into. Perhaps no one measure is going to be a silver bullet, which solves uh, social economic uh, malaise, but I think taken together uh, in certain, you know, very profound ways, Chavez uh, challenged the underlying logic of the capitalist state. Unfortunately, there were different constituencies within the Chavez banner, uh, for example, the managerial capitalist class, and I think Chavez spent far too much time trying to appease the more backward um, constituencies and not revolutionizing society to um, the degree that he might have. To what, to what extent um, can those type of uh, reforms be replicated in, insofar as that they were, in many respects, or there, there was a lot more leeway there because you had such a tremendous, um, uh, such a tremendous asset in the, uh, it being uh, having uh, the, the, the world's largest oil uh, reserves, more or less, all right? I mean, uh, the, that, the, that's a funding source, it seems to me, that is, uh, that must have had huge uh, implications for w what he could and could not do. Well, yeah, to be sure, uh, he was able to fund a lot of these programs, the health and education programs, which benefited millions of people, uh, through the oil largesse, and then also extend his influence um, within the wider region by throwing around a lot of development aid, uh, which uh, helped him garner, you know, very key strategic allies, Ecuador, Bolivia, for example, Nicaragua, Cuba. And uh, I, I'm, I'm, I don't know exactly what's going to happen to all those geostrategic alliances now, uh, particularly if an opposition candidate uh, wins the next election, but, um, I don't know, maybe even Maduro, the, his successor, might soften towards the U.S. So, so yeah, I feel like with this populist leadership, it um, is very much reliant on the qualities of the one charismatic leader. And, again, if there's one thing that I'm critical of, I think Chavez probably should have groomed a successor earlier in, say, 2006. And uh, there was just way too much emphasis on the charismatic leadership, I think, and and then you subtract the charismatic leader leader out of that equation, and you have these rather uh, ideologically inchoate movements that are trying to cobble together different constituencies. 
And then if the charismatic leader vanishes from the equation, then it could just all implode. And so that's where I'm a little critical, because I think you should have deepened the revolution 2006 onward. Uh, instead, some of the more retrograde tendencies came to the fore, uh, and, and I think that there was a historic opportunity that was kind of lost. Interesting. And, you know, it, it occurs to me that I, I don't know that there's ever been a uh, a time, at least in my lifetime, where the United States seems to have less influence or, and frankly, less interest in some respects uh, in what's going on in uh, Latin and Central America, for for better or for worse, and I would argue in some instances it's it's probably both. Uh, but um, oh, how much did that? I mean, how much did that play into what Chavez was able to do and what he did? Well, I think if you didn't have a George Bush, you probably wouldn't have have had a Hugo Chavez. I think. Uh, there, there, there was that historic speech where Chavez came to the United Nations, and then he talked about how the devil was there on the day before, and he still smelled sulfur. Yes, we and played I think, that. It was. It's, I mean, it's, we just played that clip. It's, it's, it's actually pretty funny. But uh, yeah, it is. Yeah, and I think if um, if if George Bush had not been in power, then Hugo Chavez probably would not have had nearly as much traction as he did. And I think precisely for that reason, over the past couple of years, since Obama got elected in 2008, I think uh, it's been a little bit more, it was a little bit more difficult for Chavez because he just didn't have his rhetorical punching bag. Even though I'm actually still critical of Obama because even though he ratcheted down the rhetoric on Venezuela, you have to look at what Obama has done in practice. And basically, um, even though it's a story that hasn't really been reported, uh, Obama has been um, the Obama, uh, the Pentagon under Obama has been building up his network of military bases and circling all of these leftist countries in South America, in Colombia, in Chile, uh, and even they, they even tried to uh, install a military base in Argentina, which actually got shelled because of popular opposition. And so, so, but you know, nevertheless, yeah, I do think it has been more difficult for Chavez. Uh, to because he lacks his rhetorical punching bag. I also think that perhaps Obama's race played a factor. I just think maybe it was a little bit more difficult to uh, oppose a black president uh, because uh, uh, Chavez did much to um, uh, restore race relations, and, and he, um, he carried out important reforms towards marginalized communities in Venezuela, such as Afro-Venezuelans, indigenous people. Uh, and so maybe it was, in, in some way, psychologically, a little bit more difficult for, for, Chavez, uh, for Chavez to oppose Obama, who's still, I think, a little more popular, or probably a lot more popular than Bush Yes, in, and, in the wider region. And also um, has the distinct advantage of not smelling of sulfur. Exactly. 